Welcome back. All eyes are on Indiana, and not just for the religious freedom bill that has sparked so much controversy. College basketball fans have converged on Indianapolis for tonight's much-anticipated Final Four. But despite the excitement in the arena, a dark cloud is hanging over the NCAA. In response to a lawsuit filed by former University of North Carolina athletes, the NCAA has said it's not their job to ensure educational quality. Well, my next guest knows all too well about balancing academics and the pressures of playing sports at a high level. Myron Roll played football at Florida State University, is a Rhodes Scholar, played in the NFL, and is now a medical student. Myron, thanks for being here. Is there more that the NCAA can do? They say we don't have day-to-day -day responsibility for what actually happens in the classroom. Well, thank you for having me. I, I do believe there's more that the NCAA can do, as well as individual institutions. I think that once the NCAA and institutions realize that this once amateur model of college sports no longer exists, I think that's when we can start making real progress. Uh, as you said, I'm a second year medical student uh, to be a pediatric neurosurgeon, and if I go see a patient, and this patient has donor supercussion, dyspnea, all the clinical signs and manifestations of some kind of lobar pneumonia, I go tell my attending physician, look, this is lobar pneumonia. My attending physician tells me, no, this is actually a broken foot. That attending physician is denying what's actually really happening, and I believe that's the same thing as analogous to what's happened to the NCAA. They're denying that there's so much money and pressure and highlights and exposure for these young athletes that it's bordering on professionalism. The Rhodes scholarship application process is, is legendary for its, its rigorous nature. What was the reaction of your football coaches in college when they became aware of the fact that you were making that application? Well, I've wanted to do the Rhodes Scholarship since I heard about the story of Bill Bradley. I went to high school at the Hunt School at Princeton, and I had a chance to uh, just hear about Bill Bradley's awesomeness, basically, uh, you know, in college and, and being a rock star in that respect. So when I got to Florida State, I went to the Office of National Fellowships and said, look, I want to be a Rhodes Scholar like my hero, Bill Bradley. And uh, when I applied for the scholarship, as you said, it's very intense. You have to write a CV, go through many interviews write a personal statement that basically tells the Rhodes Trust why you want to be a, a Rhodes Scholar and how this education at Oxford could help behoove your interests moving forward. Uh, there was a little bit of resistance from a few coaches, but for the most part, I got a lot of support from Florida State, from administration, teammates, faculty, because they felt that if I did well and I showed that you, know, you can actually balance academics and athletics in a major Division I college uh, institution like Florida State, uh, then that would be good for the program, that could be good for student athletes, and you know it could be good all, all the way around. So they told me I can go interview for the scholarship, I just had to win it, I did, and uh, it's been a remarkable thing for me. When you delayed your entry to the NFL, was the NFL as understanding as the coaches that you've just described? Not at first. You know, the I, I believe some people in the NFL uh, are used to a certain athlete they're used to a certain player and when there's a player that comes from a, a different sort of frame of mind has a bit of a different ideology and uh, doesn't have um, I would say a hundred percent you know outlook or perspective on just football you know I was somebody my parents wanted me to have a breadth of knowledge uh, at an early age they came from the Bahamas and they made sure that I focused on many different aspects being a great leader being a great citizen a great Christian a great brother a great thinker and football was a part of my person, but it didn't describe all of me. So I, I received a little bit of resistance, more resistance from the NFL. Uh, however, it was a great opportunity to play at that highest level. And uh, I'm, I got out the game healthy, safe, no concussions, hands good so I can operate in the future. And uh, you know, excited about the choices that I've been able to make in my life. There's so much money wrapped up in the final four, which as you know, tips off this evening. And some say, well, that money ought to be shared with the athletes. The response is, well, the athletes do get paid. They get paid in terms of scholarships for education. What's your take on that issue? You see, I, I got to Florida State with a framework and a structure uh, and support from family that could help buttress my journey. I came in there with a good vision to understanding that I not, not only come into this school to play football and to do well, but also to gain and accrue some intellectual capital, to develop it, some relationships and networks, to do multiple things, to enrich my college experience so that when I left, whether I played football or I went on to be a doctor or I did something else, 
I was going to be ready to take on the world. A lot of my teammates and, and classmates didn't have that same kind of support. So I believe that you know NCAA and, and some institution, institutions should fill that void that some of these athletes are missing in their life. And whether it's paying players directly, making them millionaires, I'm not, uh, I'm not sold on that idea. But perhaps putting a fund together to help these Got athletes re reach their goals, I think that's a good idea for them. Final question, yes or no. Jameis Winston, round one? Round one and first overall pick, no question. Whoa, okay. Dr. Roll, wanted in surgery. Thank you, Myron. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Appreciate it. Coming up. It's one thing to refuse wedding-related services to same-sex couples for religious reasons. It's quite another when a pediatrician tells you she can't care for your newborn baby. But that